I had a good friend of mine from high school who was killed in Ramadi. I watched his mom cry on the front lawn for two and a half days. And I joined the Marine Corps to try to prevent moms from laying in the front yard. I was in the Marine Corps for 10 years, went to Afghanistan, supported Iraq, and was medically retired. Now I'm a visual artist. It's hard to cope and do normal human being stuff if you're wearing your trauma on your sleeve. When I first got back home from Afghanistan, my dad was like, hey, if you ever want to talk, we're here for you. But it never made sense to be like, hey, Dad, I watched people burn to death. Also, can you pass the mashed potatoes? Or, like, how do I start this conversation? Mm. That was a clip from the new HBO documentary, We Are Not Done Yet, which follows the stories of 10 American veterans using art, poetry, and performance to grapple with traumatic experiences. Joining us now, one of the producers and driving forces behind the film, actor and activist, Jeffrey Wright. Thank you so much for being on the show this morning. Thanks so much for having me. So this looks incredibly compelling, beautiful, and important. Tell us about the 10 vets that ended up in this film. Well, it's a group of 10 vets, uh, men and women, mm -hmm. who talk about uh, their experiences uh, in the military. And they use poetry as a means of confronting trauma, processing it, and uh, ideally healing themselves and also one another um, through uh, this community. Uh, they talk about um, trauma related to combat, but also sexual assault. So we cover mm -hmm. a spectrum of, uh, of experiences. One of them had the idea that they would put on um, a staged reading of a collective poem that they had written as part of this arts therapy workshop. And um, I was invited to come down and direct them through this process, and so that was my introduction to them. Uh, it culminated in a, in a performance in D.C. at the Landsberg Theater, January 18th, 2017, mm -hmm. one of the most powerful nights of theater I've ever had. And the documentary is born out of that process. You know, uh, hearing from the veteran uh, as we came in from the break, uh, talking about how his father said, let me know if you want to talk. And, and, and he really nailed the issue for a lot of these, these veterans, and that is that it's hard to talk about. It's impossible to talk about it with someone who hasn't been there. That's why so many feel compelled to go back, even after multiple traumatic experiences. And art is really a bridge where they can show it and express their feelings and share it. Well, I think more than anything, they desire to be heard. Um, right. their, their, their stories are, um, are, are difficult ones for them, uh, but if they keep them inside, then uh, they uh, serve to kind of infect the psyche. So uh, what I heard from them um, uh, as a collective is that their voices are not heard. And I think, um, unfortunately, the narrative that, uh, that we hear too often around Veterans Day, for example, is, yes, um, one of celebration of the vets, but I think there are profound needs that are not being met. And the mm -hmm. only way that we're going to understand what those needs are, understand them better, is to hear from them themselves rather than hear from the politicians or from the ads that, uh, that we, we, we see uh, during the football games all weekend. We need to hear these voices because if you look at the, the statistics, we heard a lot of, during the campaign about 20 vets per day dying of suicide. That hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you aggregate those numbers over the past several years, we've lost more vets from suicide than we did from combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's a massive, massive problem that if we don't acknowledge, we will not solve. And uh, the first way to acknowledge it is to settle down, be quiet, mm -hmm. listen to their voices. So you have an opportunity to do that through this documentary. So I'm, I'm, I'm really proud that we're able to share it now. Jeffrey, I, I know that you are familiar with the phrase, the greatest generation made famous by Tom Brokaw's book. But for years, through World War II, through Vietnam, uh, we have had a silent generation of veterans 
who haven't spoken to their experiences because the door seems always to have been closed. But now, thanks to you and efforts like this and other efforts, that door is being opened a bit and there's light coming in. One of the things I think, and perhaps you can bear this out, in speaking to veterans, the thank you for your service, while a nice gesture, is kind of an empty gesture. Instead of saying, we want to hear about your service and hear about your life today. What do you need? What can we do? Well, I think you're absolutely right. I, I think we certainly want to honor these folks. Uh, one of the mistakes that we made after Vietnam that we didn't make after World War II and that I hope we don't make now is conflating the politics of war with the folks who take up the call. Um, so we absolutely need to honor these folks. Um, they have uh, sacrificed a lot uh, uh, and they have uh, m most of them served honorably and are committed to that service. But at the same time, again, there are needs that aren't being met uh, by the DOD, by the VA. Uh, there's a gap in services that many of these individuals are trying to take up uh, with their own hands. I've, I've spoken to vets, uh, one of whom described his uh, telephone line as being a one-man crisis center. Mm. Uh, he's taking mm. calls from folks and he's, he's afraid not to answer the phone because twice he didn't answer the phone and he found out later that his phone number was the last that caller called. It was a, 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 a vet. Who, uh, who took his own life. And so, um, yes, we thank them, but at the same time, if we really want to thank them, we need to listen, we need to strip away the platitudes and uh, our perception of their service uh, and really understand the difficulties that, uh, that that service might imply. The HBO documentary film, We Are Not Done Yet, is currently available on HBO Now, HBO Go, and On Demand. And our thanks to Jeffrey Wright. That does it for us this morning. Stephanie Rule picks up the coverage right now. Thank thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.